So this video is going to focus on the overview of the z-axis, which is the one that sits uh, on top of the of the mill and basically controls the uh, tool height. So um, it's it, it's a little different than the uh, upper and lower axis, but uh, it's still you know it's still similar enough. So um, there's a lower plate. There are there's a bearing block that's broken up into two pieces. There's a top and a bottom. Um, one has basically um, countersunk heads in the middle, and that's the one that's on the top. So um, those basically sit in there, and then there is a um, another stepper plate with arms. So and this one has uh, you can see there's kind of a a groove there. That groove lines up with um, you'll see there's a there's a hole in the plate there. So the groove is so you have access to that. Um, and these these four bolts are what you use to uh, affix it to the mill. So um, the stepper piece uses six of the three quarter number four self-tapping countersunk. The bearing block uses uh, four of the three and a quarters and four of the uh, one half inch. And this is the uh, Z, -limit, Z limit mount. Since unlike the upper and lower axis um, where there's a plate on each side of the uh, of the axis, this one basically is is fixed at the top, and the lead screw just dangles. So um, what we're doing is, if you notice on your mill, this is just a little dust cover on the bottom. Um, and so what we're going to do is just to fix the, the Z limit stop here um, that we can put in one of the ohm run switches in. Um, so when the tool head comes down, it'll hit that switch. So. What I did with this is, um, you know, I basically put this where I wanted it, uh, clamped it in place, drilled these through holes, and then uh, countersunk them on the end because this does need to be flush. So um, that's what I did. So um, one of the first things you're going to want to do is, pretty much with the other accesses, you can get away with not gluing anything. Um, you know, I tend to glue stuff just to be safer. Like it, it's not necessarily designed to have to use glue because it's, you know, it's a little janky, but um, the glue will definitely make some of the parts stronger. Um, in the case of the bearing block here though, um, I do strongly recommend gluing these two pieces together. And that's because um, they, basically get, they basically get screwed into this plate from below. Um, and if, you know, they do get bolted together, however, um, you know, there's a couple things that could happen. One, the screw could I could separate these two plates, or um, you know, if it was only gripping onto the the bottom plate, then it could potentially pop the upper plate off. So I mean, that's like super rare case scenario, but um, I don't think there's any reason not to glue these together. So um, like I said before, um, I really like this. You know, I don't have stock in Gorilla or anything, but um, the Gorilla it just says Gorilla Super Glue. Um, it's basically it's an it, it's a gel formula that does impact really well. It doesn't get super brittle when it dries, which is kind of why I like it. So, um, what you basically will do is, I'll start gluing these. Um, is just apply glue. You know, I wouldn't get too crazy with it, um, but uh, I do need to be kind of liberal with it. And then I'm going to do this on both sides. It's because they're not the flattest surfaces. And then once I have those glued together, I'll basically um, put them in place. There's no real specific orientation. They're basically mirrored. So, um, so I'll go ahead and put this together. And then I'll use two of these. Uh, I'll use two of these half inches. I guess you don't need four. You just need two. Um, and I'll put them through on the countersunk side. Uh, 
can just cinch them up. That'll basically keep the parts aligned while the glue while the while the glue dries. So um, yeah, make sure it's even. You kind of want to do them. So there you go. So they're both cinched up. I've got a good seal. Um, once this is dry. Um, and we can work on uh, on the rest of the assembly. Um, one thing I might recommend also, not necessarily required, but um, another good place to glue on this would be um, to put glue around this bevel and this, this surface here and then wear that contacts on this plate too. Um, and that's just kind of because uh, when this is installed on the on the mill, basically um, all of the force is is basically it's basically you know the the whole tool head is riding basically um, it's either pushing down on this bearing block or pushing up on this bearing block so when it pushes up on the bearing block uh, the only thing keeping it um, in place are these four screws which is you know probably adequate because um, there's not you know you're not really doing like fast plunges or anything so um, but you know you might as well glue it so you know why not um, I'll actually go ahead and do that on this one. While I'm here. So I'm just using the same glue, kind of going around. And this stuff is quite, quite strong when it dries. And then on the bottom of this piece. And then I would try and put some on the bevel. Or just the little part that will protrude through. And then maybe a little on the inside here. I mean, the one nice thing is that we're using the screws to align all the parts, so um, it's pretty foolproof. The downside is that if you need to replace just one piece, if it's glued together, then you know it's going to be a problem. You're going to have to basically get a new, um, new set of parts that for whatever you've glued together, um, and then these screw in with three quarter inch through the bottom to the. Uh, countersunk side. And then kind of tighten these evenly. come back to this when it's finished gluing and you can kind of see you can see the glue seeping around that seal so you pretty much have to destroy this piece completely in order to separate those now now that the base has been assembled and glued to the bearing block uh, we can press in the bearings um, you want to make sure that the bearings press in flush if they don't you may need to uh, clean up the you know, the inside collar there so that it fits properly. So those are flush. And then next we can assemble the uh, stepper to the base and the Z-Limit to the dust cover.
Next, we're going to install the lead screw on the assembly. Um, you'll want to make sure that this gap between the nut and the end of the threads is about 8 millimeters. Put the plastic spacer on. Push it through. Put the collar on the same as the other axis. Apply tension. And tighten. You'll want to mark nine millimeters from the end, just like the other ones, the upper and lower, and that's where the uh, how far in the CNC, uh, how far the shaft coupler will go. Tighten the shaft coupler. and it's installed. So next video we'll, uh, we'll cover installing this on the MF70 as well as the upper and lower axis.